Hi, how are you? Um, I'm working on this picture here at the moment. It's made out of wool. It's wet felted, so it's a little squirrel. And he or she is looking from, from behind a, a tree. So to finish this picture, I needed to make a few leaves, just like those ones here. And I made a little tutorial on how I make those leaves. They are wet felted with merino wool. So um, you're very welcome to watch this tutorial. It might be beneficial to you. Um, and I hope you enjoy the videos. My name is Francisca. I um, run a felting studio here in Ireland. I do online courses and also courses in, um, in groups here in my studio. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy. Bye. So I have my materials ready here and I'm going to explain each one what I have. First one here is the wire I'm going to use. I have a double wire. It's not too thick. It's very bendable. And the wire is also covered with paper. The ends, the ends are very sharp. So I'll bend them in because otherwise they would start to poke their heads through the felt at some stage and might damage your piece. So again, I'm going to make three leaves. So I need three of them. And the third one. So make sure you bend the ends in because they're very sharp. And as I said, it will prevent the wire from sticking out eventually. <clears throat> then I have here some wool. It's a little bit rougher. Um, you can't see it, but I certainly can feel it. Um, and then I have merino wool. It's an 18 micron merino wool. And I can open it. It's a batten. So it's not roving. A batting is the fibers are already mixed. I can just tear it off and use it as it is. I don't have to lay it out. So that's my colors for the leaves. And I'm going to add some blue as well. And I have some green silk that I'm going to add as well. The green silk will be added later on to the leaf. But first we start with the rougher wool here, the brown wool for the little stems of the leaves. And I'm starting at the top to um, wrap it up. And I'm actually turning the stem, the wire. I am not twirling the wool around the wire. Instead, I hold the wool between my thumb and finger and squeeze it slightly. With slight pressure, I can glide it all the way up. I don't need too much wool in the middle of the stem and I don't need too much wool on either side of it either because that's going to be inside of the leaf. So I'm not really going to see much of it. But I certainly want to have one end um, nicely covered. the second one and the same thing again twist it with your right hand if you're right-handed bend in the tops if you have wool overhanging you can just bend it in and then bring it together with the wool and wrap it all down and it's really the easiest done this way when you twist the wire and glide the wool over it. And don't use too much wool, just a little bit. If you have too much wool, it gets, it's a little bit harder. So use little. You can go over and back as many times as you want. Mm. 
<clears throat> and the last one. As I said, just one end really needs to be nice. And remember, it goes in the water, so you know, make sure you have enough there that you that you're not going to see that there's wire inside. Again, I don't need an awful lot in the middle because they'll be covered with green wool anyway. And one end doesn't have to be as, as tidy either. So that's the three stems done. I am working here on a bubble mat and a non-slip mat. So here I have my green merino wool and I am just, I, because it's a batting, I can just literally tear it off and lay it on the non-slip mat. The non-slip mat helps me, helps the wool to stay in place when I add the warm water to it. So it's, it can't run away from from me it can't it it helps to prevent the design basically um so i'm i'm laying down here the first shade of green three different leaves and i'm i'm aiming to make the leaves about a third bigger than um what i want them eventually to be so there is another shade of green going to the side of it and it's all a 18 micron merino wool and it's all a batting so that makes it really helpful. I don't have to lay it out crisscross because that's already done for me in the batting. And I can also work fairly thin uh, without getting holes. I love blue in the leaves, um, but first here we're going to add some more green to it. So you can add as many shades of green that you want in a leaf. That doesn't matter that it's, that is entirely up to, to every individual. I love the blue in the leaf, as I said, um, I find it just gives it a nice contrast. And then I add my silks. Um, to get a nice effect on silk, you do need a lot of silk. Well, a lot, I mean, you see how much I put down here. And don't do that. Do not put a big blob on it. As I see many people do when they run courses, uh, the wool will not be able to work its way through it. It's too much. So you have to open up the silk when you put it down on your design. So the wool from underneath uh, has to be able to work its way through the silk and latch on with the silk. And if you have too much silk on top, it will find it very difficult to do. Add another shape of green that's also silk. So I have a bit of um, orange silk and then a bit of green silk again on top. So you see I'm adding quite a good bit of silk but as I said it's no problem as long as you open up the silk so the wool can work through it. So just putting this in place and then once I'm happy with the design I can start with the felting process. So again, I'm covering this with a non-slip mat. It's the same mat that I used underneath the wool, just to keep the wool in place when I add the warm water to it now. So then I add my warm water. I'm using a water sprinkler here, but you can use any container whatsoever and use warm water, not hot water, water that's comfortable on your hands. And you will need quite a lot of water because once it's bulking like that, you know you haven't enough. It really has to be flat. So there's still, the wool is still dry. There's still air in it. There's still air trapped in it. So the wool is still a little bit dry. So make sure it really has to be flat and not bulking up. 
So by pressing down the wool, I am spreading the water evenly because there's a lot of water trapped underneath the wool as well. So press the wool down to really get all wet. I also add the stems for the leaves into the water, just put it into the chuck to get them wet too. Then I turn the whole design over because really what I was looking at was the front of the leaf. And now I'm starting to felt the back of the leaf really, I start off with that. So I, but first I have to open it up here, I have to take off the bottom um, non-slip mat. See it's sticking there a little bit so just carefully lifting it up because I have first I have to work in the little stems into the leaf and form the leaves before I actually felt it. So just sorting out the mats here they're a little bit turned over. So I'm starting by folding in the sides and because the leaves, they don't have to be any particular side. Then again, remember we have a nice stem and maybe one side that is not so nice in the stem, not so well covered with wool. So I am going to make sure the end that is nicer covered with wool, that that will stick out of the leaf. And then I fold in the sides of the wool, as you can so see me doing here. And I'm just giving it a bit of a shape like a leaf, basically. And I'm doing the same with all three of them. So you can make one leaf a bit bigger or smaller than the other one. That is really ent completely entirely up to yourself. Yeah, you can see there now that top part there still wasn't entirely wet, so it just added a bit more water. So I was just speeding things up a bit there, but as you can see, I can still see the stem. Um, them leaves that I laid out um, were not that big that I could actually even cover the stems. Sometimes I can when I fold in the wool, sometimes I have enough. Like the first one I did, I don't need as much wool to cover the stem. But all you have to do is add more wool. It's as simple as that. And because the wool is probably already saturated with water. Just press down the dry wool and it will be wet as well. So you can see exactly how much wool that you need that you don't see the stem anymore. Um, also, if you want, you can add more silks to the back of it. Um, I personally won't do it here because those leaves will only really be visible on the one side. So I am not going to add more silks to it, but I just didn't want to see the stem all the same. So I'm just covering everything and then I'm ready to start with the felting. So just to be clear, this is actually the back of the leaf um, because on the front of it, I remem remember I added the lovely shiny um, two colored silk, the green and the orange. So at the moment you are looking at the back of the leaf. So I'm just making sure the stem is properly covered. So I'm just adding here and there a bit more wool to it. Then once more, I cover everything with a non-slip mat. And now I can start with the felting. And for this, I simply use a bar of soap. Um, sometimes I use um, palm leaf soap. Sometimes I use a dove soap. Some people swear by olive soap. I use just simple soap, whatever is um, available to me at the time. I'm not a big fan of washing up liquid um, because I don't feel it makes the wool as slippy. I prefer the soap because the soap is a, um, a really important um, 
factor when it comes to felting. First of all, it's changing the wool's pH and it starts with the felting process, but it also makes the wool slippy. If you try to felt without the soap, you can still felt wool without soap, but it's much harder to run your hands through it because it's not slippy basically. So the soap makes it slippy, so it's much easier to glide over and back with your hands or whatever you're using for the felting. So you see, I have still the non-slip mat on it. It just helps to keep the design on it. Then I take it off once the wool comes together. And I make sure then that the stems are not falling out. So that's my next step. I'm really working it there that the wool is latching on to the stem so they're not um, coming out again, out between the, the layers of wool. So the same here with the last one, just working that stem a little bit. And then once I'm happy that the stem is fine, then I can do the whole leaf. So people always ask, how long does it take to felt? That is very hard sometimes to see because everybody has a slightly different technique to felting. It depends on what wool that you use. If you use a coarser wool, it can take longer to felt. Fine wool felts very quickly. And then it also depends on, um, on the power of your hands, basically how much um, pressure you apply to the wool. How quick can you felt? Sometimes I add more warm water to it when I feel um, it's gone very cold. So I add more warm water there. But yeah, it's um, everybody felt different in a dip, different rhythm. They have different pressure to the wool, um, different materials. So it's hard to know. But basically what I like in my wool, when I have it felted and I come to the fulling stage, I want the really tight felt. I don't like a loose felt. So this is coming nicely together already. Um, you can see by the length of the video how long this actually here takes me to felt it. But I wouldn't say per leaf it's any longer than two or three minutes. So I'm just working the stem there now. And a good indicator that it's well felted is actually the silk. When it starts to nicely um, swirl, nice little swirls in the silk. It's not just lying on top. It's really well worked in. And you see there now with the wire in the leaf, you can give it a nice shape to it. That's why it added the wire into the leaf so I can shape the leaf. Um, a little bit so it's not just flat. So the second leaf there now, the same thing. It's felted. All I'm doing now is fulling it. And here, when you're not too happy with the way your leaf turned out, you can actually cut it to the shape that you want it. But I wouldn't wait for too long. Um, do this at the very early stage of the felting because you want your wool to come still together that you don't get um, basically a cut edge that you can see. I want to, this edge to be able to close up that nobody can see that I actually gave this leaf a bit of a different shape with the scissors. So you see it's closing in nicely. The silk has nicely worked itself into the wool or the wool has it worked its way through the silk more like it and it will nicely swirl together. So I'm happy with this one. Just do the stem a little bit more. I try to roll it there on the mat, but um, 
It was a bit hard, so it's easier between my hands. Sometimes you can roll it on the mat. It depends really what you're working at. But leaves are really fun to make. You can make them in so many different colours as well. Um, and give them different different shapes, different sizes. So, um, and they're quickly done. They don't really take that long to do. Once you know what you're doing, um, you'll have them done in no time. Don't make them too thick either when you're laying out your wool. Um, first of all, you have a quicker felted when it's not too tight. See there now, I'll cut enough some more just to give it a different shape. And then you can run the whole thing on the bubble wrap as well. Bubble wrap is great for felting. Um, bamboo mats as well. Just anything with a bit of a texture. So the wool again um, can fold better, quicker because you're pushing the wool together. So you imagine if you just have a flat table um there's no traction on it so the wool cannot shift so something that the wool um disturbs the layout of the wool so the fibers push against each other i can also quickly wash out the soap and um, that helps me at the later latter stage of the folding process um that i can um basically felt it a little bit quicker or you know make a tighter felt it's kind of hard to describe but try it take out the excess uh, soap that's left and um, work it at the end with no soap and see the difference yourself Right, so they're finished now and I am going to wash out the soap under a running tap and the next step then is to put them into a vinegar and water solution. So here I have some water in a jug and I'm just adding a small bit of vinegar to it and that will take out the rest of the soap that may be still left in the felt. So this is it. I am just letting them dry now. I put them on a towel and let them dry. It takes about a day or two, depending on how warm it is in your room. So once dry, I want to actually stitch um, some features into the leaves with the sewing machine. For that, I put on a foot like this, an embroidery foot onto the sewing machine. They're either round or square. Pop back in there. And then the next thing I might want to make sure with my sewing machine that my feeder is lowered so it's not up. So this way I can move my pieces left, right, backwards and forwards without any problems. So this is not stopping me. So they need to be down. And then I'm ready to go. I'm using the same thread on the top and also on the bottom. As you can see here, how lovely the silk really has come out. Now you can really see the swirls and um, I think they're just gorgeous when they're swirling around like that. So when I'm stitching this, remember I have a um, wire in it. So I'm just marking it here a little bit so I have a better idea where it is. Um, you can feel it as well with your finger, but just this gives me a little bit of a guidance. And I'm just putting the second one there to see where the wire stops. 
So I can just easily move this around um, on the leaf. So there is no length in the stitches. You have to guide the piece to get the stitches that you want. You can make really long ones or very short ones. And really with this you can just move the leaf anywhere that you want the stitch. So when you do this just make sure that you check on the need as well um, how the thread is looking. Not that you do a full leaf and then the thread is completely loose at the back of it. And then I just go down back back again. Because I, I want to give this leaf um, a structure of um, a leaf. The veins, I want them to represent veins on the leaf. So I'm just going over and back here. Sorry there, now it's zooming in on my fingers rather than the leaf. But I think you can get the gist of it. And then the leaf is in the way. Sure, I couldn't be watching everything, the camera and, and the needle. But I'll keep going like this until I come down to where the, the wire is in between the felt. And I just want to show you what I'm doing there. So when I come to the wire, I am doing this manually. I'm not using the pedal, so I'm using my hand to guide the needle because if the needle hits the wire by full force, it's not very good for your sewing machine and you will break the needle. And also, I always get such a fright. So I go very easily there and as much as I can, I use the pedal. But then when I know I'm coming near the, the wire again, I'm using the manual wheel so I can just guide each step and I can actually feel if the needle would hit the wire. So see, I'm going very slowly. Just one stitch after the other. And then I'm finishing up this leaf. I'll just go backwards and forwards and that's it. So I'm just taking it off the sewing machine. I'm going to cut the threads and you see, because of the wire, how nice I can bend it to any way I want to bend it. I can give it a nice shape. So whatever form I want this leaf to have, later on, it's it's there for me. So just cutting off the thread and I have my first leaf ready to go. So here we go. Three leaves finished and I am going to use them for this picture. That I showed you at the beginning, I'm going to stitch stitch them onto the picture and over the stick there because I want to use the stick to hang this up rather than framing the artwork. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I have more free tutorials there on YouTube. I'm going to add the links here somewhere for my YouTube channel so you can check out the rest of them. So I hope to see you soon. Bye.